Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. This is the only connector and jumper that I recommend. Let me show you guys what it is that I mean. So we're in this situation here. We've probably got like a bi-wire speaker and we want to create a good connector here, connector jumper, whatever you call them. And um, yeah, I believe that you can do it. Uh, that it, This is what I believe is the best that's uh, that's out there um you have this combination here with this cable here also you can find it at places like this hi-fi collective and that's the price so it, it's actually not very um, expensive um it, it it is um it is like a top class connector sound and and typically when you buy connectors you don't get anything in this quality of of copper and and this quality of um silver plugs you know um just a great combination this with that and um by the way also check out my other video with um what was it macintosh uh, clips connector um that that's also a really good video related to to this um that will help you max out your macintosh equipment so i feel that there's a lot of bad uh not, not a lot of bad people there's a lot of bad <laughs> equipment out there um half bad speakers especially they're thin they're cheap they're not very big they've usually got uh two units in like the left channel or the right channel or a lot of units and the and the, the units are small and just there's just a lot of really bad speakers out there and there's a lot of bad speaker cables and there's especially uh what comes with this uh, a very huge amount of bad connectors and jumpers now i've mentioned this previously in a video that um this is a weakness um, that's affecting our sound quite a bit. And I feel that typically when you have like book stand speakers, you usually don't get a lot of bass, a lot of pleasant sound where you can really yank up the, the volume. Um, and it does to some degree sound a bit fake. Um, not quite there something not quite right and you know we know how how most people have their their systems they usually don't have a very good cd player dac i mean obviously some people do you know but these things cost money so that's why a lot of people don't own these really good pieces of equipment so this is like one of the ways where when you're down there and you have a setup and you don't have a lot of money and you want to get far in hi-fi, these are one of the things that you should really do from the start. You know, you, you should do this from the start because it's one of those ways where you can really concentrate just the right amount of energy on the right stuff that will pay itself several times going from now you know over to the future so i i find this to be a, a pretty good um investment of course you don't have to do this um but th this is how you do it you basically take an lx um didn't i write the cable This is the cable, the LX96. Uh, it's called LX96. It's got some weird names. I don't know why. Sometimes they call it the Lexus. Sometimes they call it the LX96. The whole um, audio note cable system is a bit weird with their names. Uh, don't ask me why. Well, you basically get this thing here, the, this cable, and you connect it with those plugs, and you make sure you don't save on the soldering tin. You get a, an audio note store guy to make this for you. You don't take shortcuts. That will make sure that the sound doesn't get tainted. 
Uh, it has a protective uh, coating on it. You need to be a professional in order to remove that and, and, and have this full effect of connecting the banana, spade plugs, whatever you use uh, onto this cable. This isn't a normal cable that you can just like rip off and connect and screw it in or solder on. So that's why you have to do it that way. That's why you have to pay a bit extra. But it is an investment that is good, that is going to pay itself uh, several times. So um, that's what I recommend that, that most people do. Uh, I find that a lot of connectors out there generally are really bad. They are either really bright, really dark, have some kind of structural fault to them, um, ha has more of a tendency of putting something extra on the sound instead of, you know, what's it called, detracting and, 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 and connecting you more to the music and, and making the equipment um, disappear. So I find that with a lot of connectors, you, you just hear that like as an extra thing that, that that's on the sound. But we also have, um, oh yeah, I also have to mention that, of course, once you've done this, if you then, on top of that, have the uh, the same LX96 uh, cable, um, let me just write that, LX96. If you have the same LX96 cable as a speaker cable, you get like a double effect. So why not do that? You know, it might be a bit expensive. I get that. But again, it's one of those top cables out there that just fits so many classes of systems. Even some of the the systems that I generally totally stay away from, you know, uh, a lot of the the chi-fi gear, a lot of the the newest cheap stuff that a lot of channels recommend, you know, e even stuff like that can sound pretty damn good with this. Okay, but um, that's basically uh, what I have to say. And you you know, there are always alternatives. For example, I know that Cardass they make some pretty good connectors that are well above um, the average but again price wise we're also talking something that's typically two three four five times more uh, money than most connectors that you buy out there connectors jumpers whatever you call them but I feel that personally that this when you buy Cardas connectors you know that's that's good stuff but uh, you know compared to this stuff that I'm mentioning I feel that it's uh, it's only about 60% as good and it costs like three times more. So I'm like, why would you do that? You know, and you no, know, like everything in life, once you do these do it yourself solutions, you know, I'm not talking about making your own speaker or amplifier, but some of these few do it yourself solutions, like I'm mentioning now, once you get into that, it, it just it pays off once you hit it just right, once you get the right combination. And you could, of course, let's say that you've got a really good system, something that's, I don't know, uh, top aquaface, top ear, top uh, jadis. Maybe you then want to not use uh, this cable here. Maybe you want to you know, go for the big brother, you know, and the big brother costs like, I don't know, eight, ten times more. And and, and that's a totally, it, it, it's very much the same type of sound, just a lot more powerful, more resolution, more pressure, more intense. Um, it's basically the same cable, just, uh, yeah, more, more powerful, basically. So, um... That's that all the other other alternative. You could also do something that's a hell of a lot better. The one that I prefer is that you go over to the um, Audio Note SPA 19 silver cable. Um, I, I think they've got something like a SPA 12, 13, 19. I'd, I'd, I'd recommend the 19 version. Uh, you could, of course, also do it with the, with the other models, but then you'll have to run a a double pull so I think money wise this is the best one but yeah these things changes prices change you have to look out for that um, so basically for the uninitiated uh, the people that don't know this I would say that personally 
all audio notes, silver cables, basically sound the same signature-wise. It, it is the same uh, silver as far as I know. Correct me if, my, if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, the thing that just changes is the, the structure of the cable, how it's built, and how many threads that there are in the cable. And then going over to certain other cables that they're, sometimes they use um, single core. Uh, cables and other times they have like uh, the really expensive silver cables in different uh, thicknesses like with, with the Sogon and the Isis cables um, that's basically it so so when you're buying like a smaller version than this or a slightly bigger version it's basically the same sound but you have to know that the more threads that you put on something typically the more stable the sound becomes and the more firm the bass gets and you know everything just you just get a tiny bit more of, of everything but it's basically the same sound just more solid the more threads that you have so yeah um, I would suggest if it's possible running a double or triple run of SPA 19 silver cables of course that's that's expensive and that's why I only recommend that for the few users that have a really good system and i'm when i'm saying really good system i i mean stuff like yeah you know audio note mid-class system uh, audio note top systems um negra systems spectral systems ear jadas you could also go lower than that i mean you could stretch it to aquaface gear macintosh gear maybe even audio flight gear but i think that when you're hitting around the level of class a audio flights you know these 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 more what do you call them normal uh high-end brands that people want to call high-end i think that generally you don't want to deal with this cable because that cable is so good it will tell you things about your equipment that you don't want to hear so since it is so revealing and i have to mention audio notes silver cables are like the most natural deep warm type of sound that exists there's like this preconception that um preconception miscon i think it's misconception that um that silver generally is harsh and most people are right silver generally is harsh because it's a bad quality of silver but when you're getting into audio note silver cables it you're you're kind of going away from that harshness into a totally different type of silver sound that you don't normally hear it's it's a very warm deep type of sound but still revealing a lot uh really a, a lot and you need like a solid base for your system so even if, if you haven't got earth connection if you haven't got like a decent dac uh, cd player amps uh, speaker stuff like that i generally don't recommend that you mess around with silver cables all your audio note or other silver cables from other brands so um that's good you know uh, that's good and i recommend that um like i said before you want the speaker cable to match the um connected that's an extra plus and of course if you can on top of that you know have a single wire configuration as a speaker cable and feed that signal like i'm going to show you guys here to the bottom terminals what it usually does is that it recycles the 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 signal and recycling the signal is usually good when you have high quality components because it you're basically sending the the signal um like uh, it's it's hard to to describe what, what exactly what's going on but it's creating a different type of sound that usually is more settled more warm uh and releases a, a bit more whereas if you place this uh, speaker cable at the top usually the sound gets uh, faster that the electrical what do you call it the the electrical pulses or whatever you call it the, the whole signal gets faster to the the treble and the mid-range which usually makes the sound more 
uh, fatiguing, bright. It might be more clear and focused, but that that effect where you get the speaker to fully release and you're pulling it fully up and you get that depth and that, that naturality and that, that, I wouldn't call it like a traditional sound, but that type of sound that you don't normally hear that's really high quality i i personally feel that you only get that once you use the bottom uh, terminals and so many speakers on the market have this like analytical bright way of sort of you know um sounding a bit suspicious sounding a bit uh, you're not really sure and, and so on and this and the reason why I recommend this is because it kind of compensates and, and regulates the sound so there's more time for stuff to happen and things are working more together. Whereas when you're putting it on the top terminals, it's 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 like the signal is going too fast through the speaker in the wrong way. If if that all makes sense to you guys. Um let me just see here. Um, yeah, like, like I said here, that's how you get the most out of your speaker. And like I said before in my previous videos, um, three meter length speaker cable is what I consider like the optimal balance of focus, precision, attack, coupling, um, naturality and bass. But it could be that you have some kind of special situation you could have a room that's very harsh acoustically harsh it could be that your walls are very hard physically hard and naked and that they're close to the speaker and speakers and and it could be that you know the sound waves are going in a way that's you know a bit unstable and all over the place it could be that your speaker is a bit thin ish so you want to perhaps compensate a bit so again, if you're one of those type of people that want to perhaps give a tiny bit of, of, of the focus and the precision, if you want to give that up a bit, then go for the four meter length so that you could add perhaps a tiny bit more bass uh, time for the sound to settle, stuff like that. Um, it's a bit like, it's a bit like if you add it a a chair two three or four and put them like in in a random uh, you know random position in your room because if you do that it creates a sort of of lag so that you're not hearing directly what's happening it's, it's kind of settling in a more natural organic way we're not talking huge differences here we're talking smaller differences that a lot of people won't necessarily hear in in bad conditions but i'm just giving you guys this 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 choice so you realize what's going on because uh i didn't mention this in my previous video how to remove harshness but i don't think i did maybe maybe i did but a lot of the people that i meet that have problems with harshness and uh, the sound not fully being bass rich and nice and pleasant and stuff like that, the the people that 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 have these problems and they just keep on building on those problems, they they never really fully solve that problem. It's typically because they have short speaker cables, you know, especially if you have like a two meter long speaker cable or two and a half meter long speaker cable, you are when, when you are putting yourself into that situation, what's happening is that you'll be getting a lot of focus, a lot of coupling, uh, a lot of clarity, but that time that is needed to like uh, recharge and discharge the energy is typically not going to be there for your, uh, what do you call it, brain to, to register that in a normal way. It's, it's almost like the sound is getting like whoosh, fast uh, too fast through the speakers you know i i personally have this problem where i listen to a lot of noticed cables and they keep on advertising it and i think that they're, they're right that they have some of the fastest uh, cables in the world and i definitely agree with them they are fast because 
a lot of the times when I listen to like Nordos cables, especially the more expensive ones, on a system that isn't necessarily that good, and on top of that, the cables are a bit on the short end, you know, it's like two meter, two and a half meter length speaker cable. It's really annoying to listen to because yeah, it, it's 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 detailed, it's fast, it's focused, it's got a lot of uh, attack and coupling, but it just doesn't settle. And when sound doesn't settle, you're kind of missing that bit of extra bass and and creaminess in the mid range. And you know, it's almost like you're moving the entire sound from from like the bottom and pushing it a bit up towards the the uh, the the mid range and a bit up towards the the treble you know it just goes in like full attack mode and doesn't relax you know it's just going do 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 look at me look at me this is cool boo, 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 boo. and you know in a way that's very nice for a short period of time but when we're dealing with these shorter cables it puts a really high demand on your system your system having been configured in a proper way. So that could sound good as long as you just know what you're doing and you're doing it in the right way. So that's basically everything I have to say uh, about this topic. Uh, I made it a bit long, but I've um, I've kind of, I wouldn't say dilly-dallied uh, around this uh, subject, but I have mentioned it before that uh, a good connector and jumper is is important and now you know specifically which ones are good and i have to say there's a lot of people in the world end up with like a half bad speaker cable and you can more easily get away with that once you make a jumper connector whatever you call it on your on your speaker with a cable like this you know it's becomes more digestible and you your brain can more easily understand like oh yeah this is what's going on so what happens a lot with um, a lot of systems in the world is that you have a lot of moving parts like connectors cables uh, all kinds of units speakers whatever and if you're on every single part of the chain have like a half bad connection, you're going to hear that. And most people in the world will always have be in that situation. So this is one of the things where you can kind of compensate, but not compensate in, 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 a, in a lower class way. Compensate in actually a, quite a, a high class uh, type of way. So... I hope that um, I hope that helps you guys, and uh, you can always make you know longer runs uh, if you want to. You know, um, using the same cable as an RCA cable, uh, possibly I don't know coax cable. You could also do that. You it could also make the sound better, but you know, um, for some reason I don't know why I don't find this cable. Uh, particularly good as a coax cable um, I think you would have to use some kind of a shielded cable perhaps or the SPA 19 cable which is a hell of a lot better uh, as, as a coax cable usually when you have a coax cable you have a 75 ohm uh, what's it called shielding on it which which kind of does something to the sound and I think that's one of the reasons why it just becomes it could potentially become a bit too soft. So if you're using this as a coax cable, I recommend you only use it in something that is like mm, 50 centimeters or like 100 centimeters maximum. I have personally made a cable that was uh, 150 centimeters, one and a half meters. And I personally find the sound to be too forgiving, too soft, uh, too generalized. But um, that could still sound very good if I just cut it down to like a third of the length. Um, so just know that. That, that, that. That's a pro tip that you usually only get to know once you've 
paid a lot of money for you know making a lot of cables and you have to find out in, in the hard way uh, but everything's relative remember that everything that i say is relative meaning that i don't want to confuse you now but you can have like a an overly harsh thin sounding dac or streamer and because of that you could you could even think that this here in a one and a half meter version coax cable that i have could potentially uh, sound good now okay let's say it sounds good but then you're actually compensating in in a, in a lower level way that i don't suggest that anybody does so again everything's kind of relative you kind of have to know uh, what to do with the things it's not enough um, like like making your own pizza and knowing the ingredients you also have to know uh, how long does it have to be in the oven um, what type of cheese not just cheese but what type of cheese do you want to put on it and perhaps also like uh, some other small details for it to you know come together and and do its thing and um, one last thing I want to mention um i just want to squeeze this in i heard from a couple of people that have been emailing me that um this thing that i mentioned this this snake oil video that i mentioned uh why does this work uh is this snake oil i think it was yeah one of that picture of, of snake oil um I discovered the more I tested, and, and some of my friends from the community, the more they tested these things, that um, you could potentially, if you want to go really deep into this subject, uh, do a bit of manipulation on the minus pole, on power cables, on speaker cables, DC cables, um certain types of cables maybe inside of speaker cables stuff like that um it it's not fully documented i haven't done all this testing but i've experienced it a couple of times in some few connections and i just want to tell you that um if you ever want to mess around with something uh, i wouldn't recommend doing this on on a connector jumper cable but potentially Potentially, you could um, make the minus pole um, slightly longer. Uh, put some uh, more cable on that compared to the, the plus pole. Again, you have to consult with, with a professional to see what's right. I'm just saying there is some potential in making a very sophisticated uh, type of compensational sound there that might save your sound especially if you're dealing with really really low class equipment so it's something that's a bit in the gray zone that i don't know enough about i just know a lot of people that's been that have been telling me this friends uh ex-colleagues uh acquaintances that i have in, in the hi-fi world so something to to mess around with especially if you're working with some i don't know some some lower class wire that you want to kind of you know squeeze the most out of so yeah this is um, me and that's the video about this subject i hope you guys liked it have a nice day